Hello everyone. Welcome to this new video which is on tradition and individual talent. A very famous and important essay written by T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot was one of the major poets of the 20th century. He was a poet, essayist, playwright and also a literary critic. He was a central figure in English language modernist poetry. His critical pronouncements are published largely in the form of essays and articles in numerous periodicals and journals of the day. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1948. Tiazelet's major poems include The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, which was published in the year 1915. Then after that, the famous The Wasteland, published in the year 1922. Then The Hollow Men, Ash Wednesday, Four Quartets, etc. He was also famous for his plays, particularly Murder in the Cathedral, and also The Cocktail Party. Literary criticism at the beginning of the 20th century was chiefly impressionistic. Impressionistic criticism, which is a product of romantic individualism, is chiefly based on individual responses. But uh, Iliad's criticism is predominantly a reaction against this tradition. His central purpose as a writer has always been a search for detachment stemming directly from his unbelief in the primacy of emotions. The reputation of Eliot as a critic mainly rests on his work of eight years, included in the two well-known books, The Sacred Wood and The Homage to Dryden. Of all the essays in these books, tradition and the individual talent represents the essence of his critical philosophy. One of the most important of his essays, it can truly be considered to be his poetic manifesto. The essay Tradition and Individual Talent was first, pub first published in The Egoist in the year 1919 and it was later reprinted in The Sacred Wood in 1920 and also in Selected Essays in 1932. So uh, this essay is one of the uh, one of the earliest of Eliot's major critical essays and also the most famous among his critical works. In this essay he puts forward the theory of impersonality in poetry which is to be achieved first through the poet's submission to tradition and secondly through the extinction of his own personality. So very important he put forward the theory of impersonality in poetry in this essay. So uh, let's discuss the main points of the essay. So Eliot begins the essay by discussing about the importance of tradition, his concept of tradition and also the relationship between the poet and past literature. The first point which he discussed was the, the English do not have a healthy sense of tradition. They value a poet for his uniqueness. This search for novelty is wrong-headed. That means the English people, they generally praise a poet for the essentially individual aspects of his work. The tendency is to dwell upon the poet's difference from his predecessors, especially from his immediate predecessors, and to emphasize the uniqueness of his poetry. What Eliot means is that a poet's originality consists in his capacity to absorb the spirit in which his predecessors wrote. His individuality consists in his power to continue to develop the pattern of tradition left by them. So a writer, he must understand the tradition left by the earlier poets. A good writer must always have an awareness about his tradition, about the past poets. Okay. 
an awareness of tradition does not mean a blind adherence to the successes of the dead poets that means it's not imitation okay it cannot be inherited it can be acquired only by great labor tradition involves the historical senses that is the sense that many of the essential things of the past have an indispensable relevance to the present so that means there must be a continuity okay the historical sense means not only a sense of things as they have happened in the past but also a sense of their relevance in the present so according to eliot if a writer understands the significance of tradition it does not mean imitation imitation of the past writers but it means the historical sense it also implies a recognition of the continuity of literature okay that there was a continuity that is the historical sense a writer must understand this one that means the poetry of the past and the poetry of the present coexist elit continues by saying that no poet has his complete meaning alone he is an integral part of a larger pattern he is to be judged by the standards of the past that means a poet cannot be evaluated or appreciated in isolation okay we must set him for contrast and comparison among the dead his appreciation is the appreciation of his relation to the dead poets so a poet of the present he will be judged by the standards of the past then he says conformity to tradition and individuality always go together it is the duty of the poet to be conscious of the main current of literature that is the poet's conformity to tradition is not one sided while his work embodies a spirit of tradition the tradition it itself is modified by the introduction of the new work that means he explains that existing literary works form a perfect pattern among themselves it is this pattern that gets readjusted by the introduction of a new work of art that means there is a constant interrelation between the old and the new old and the new works and it constitutes the vital current of literature that means the past therefore is altered by the present as much as the present is directed by the past then he says art never improves but the material of art changes from time to time that is the art of one period is not an improvement on the art of another period but the material of art changes from age to age this change is not an improvement but merely a development an understanding of tradition does not mean pedantry but essential knowledge so elliot says gaining essential knowledge is the most important thing in one's absorption of tradition so an understanding of tradition it does not mean pedantry or erudition that means to show off the scholarship okay to show off one's scholarship it means gaining essential knowledge it's very important some can achieve it very easily shakespeare can be cited as the best example he shakespeare from a single book like plutarch's lives he could learn more essential history that most men could from all the books in the british museum so a poet's prime duty is to develop the consciousness of the past and to continue to develop the same throughout his career he must surrender himself to this consciousness or sense of tradition which is more valuable than himself so the progress of an artist is thus a continual self sacrifice a continual extinction of personality or a continual depersonalization so that continual extinction of personality is very important for an artist in the next part of the essay eliot attempts to define this depersonalization that extinction of personality okay he also uses the platinum analogy here 
he begins the argument by an off-quoted statement that honest criticism and sensitive appreciation is directed not upon the poet but up, but upon the poetry that means his warning against biographical cr- approach to criticism he makes it very clear that poetry is more important than the poet himself okay poetry is of utmost importance the mature poet does not have a more interesting personality but a mind which is a more finely perfected medium for the poet's mind is a medium in which different feelings freely enter into new combinations here he refers to the chemical reaction okay the chemical reaction between sulfur dioxide and oxygen in the presence of a platinum filament to form sulfuric acid eliot remarks that the mind of the poet acts exactly in the manner of the catalyst here he refers to a chemical reaction that happens between sulfur dioxide and oxygen in the presence of a platinum filament in order to form sulfuric acid that reaction takes place only in the presence of platinum but the acid that is formed contains no trace of it okay nor is the platinum filament in any way affected okay understand that means this chemical reaction between sulfur sulfur dioxide and oxygen it give rise to sulfuric acid in the presence of a platinum filament the reaction could only take place take place only in the presence of platinum but the acid that is formed that is the sulfuric acid it doesn't contain any trace of this platinum and the platinum is also not in any way affected okay it remains neutral and inert so according to t s eliot the mind of the poet is the bit of platinum even when a poet writes on his own personal experience there is a separation between the man who undergoes the experience and the man who creates the poem the poet's mind is a receptacle for seizing and storing up innumerable feelings and emotions all these emotions and feelings remain there until all the components necessary to form of form a new compound are present together so here he makes a distinction between emotions and feelings so poetry is important not the poet poet is not at all important the poet acts as a medium not as a personality eliot also rejects wordsworth's theory of the poetic process and states that emotion recollected in tranquility is an inexact formula to explain the poetic process for it is neither emotion nor recollection nor even tranquility that is important the poet's personal emotion has nothing to do with the emotion in his poetry so the poet's business is not to find a new emotion but to use the ordinary emotions poetic process is a concentration of a number of experiences which are poetically significant this concentration is not an act of deliberation it results in the creation of a new thing that's a poem but in the writing of poetry that there is also a great deal which is conscious or deliberate here uh, eliot implies the technical aspects of poetry so he uh, concludes this anti romantic argument with his famous definition of poetry poetry is not a turning loose of emotion but an escape from emotion it is not the expression of personality but an escape from personality so according to ts eliot poetry is not a turning loose of emotion but it is an escape from emotion and also it is not the expression of personality but an es- escape from personality impersonality so eliot is over emphasizing the importance of objectivity what eliot means by escape from personality is what aristotle calls generalize generalizing or universalizing of experience so in the last part of the essay eliot sums up his views for a just estimation of poetry good or bad 
it is necessary to divert interest from the poet to the poetry what is important in poetry is neither emotion nor technique taken in isolation but the expression of significant emotion which has its life in the poem not in the life of the poet that is impersonal a poet can achieve this impersonality only by surrendering himself to his work and by acquiring a new a true sense of tradition so this impersonal theory of poetry which eliot propounds in this essay has brought about a complete reorientation in the modern concept of poetry his definition that poetry is not a turning loose of emotion but an escape from emotion it is not the expression of personality but an escape from personality this expresses a total rejection of the romantic subjectivism put for uh, put forth by wordsworth and eliot wants poetry to be intellectual and objective he wants the writers from narrow subjectivism he advocates the classical ideal of objectivity and perfection so a poet can achieve this impersonality in two ways first by drawing upon a strength outside himself that of his ancestral poets and second by a total surrender to the work before him okay so this is a short summary of the essay tradition and individual talent written by t s eliot so once again to sum up in this essay t s eliot puts forward the theory of impersonality in poetry which is to be achieved first through the poet's submission to tradition and secondly through the extinction of his own personality so this is all about the essay thank you